Morning everybody. Today I'm going to do a little video on felling dogs. What the difference is between three, four, and the five points. A lot of customers always ask, what do I choose? Which one's the best? And so forth. So basically it comes down to a couple things to consider when you're buying these is, you know, what, what are you basically cutting as far as wood? Um, the wood may change as far as from the west coast to the east coast to overseas or whatever. And what I mean by that is the trees might have less swell butt or more swell butt. This is swell butt on the side of the stump there. And you can come around to the side and you can kind of see how it kind of gets pretty gnarly on the side of these stumps. This is a cottonwood stump out here that grows on the west coast. I'm in Washington. So when you have swell butt like that, um, you know, obviously you're running a big bar to get this size of tree down. And I, I came up when I cut this tree because I didn't care about saving, you know, board footage. So I didn't cut it really low. But somebody that's trying to get as much board footed as you can would want to cut this tree down lower and they would have to deal with this swell butt. And when dealing with this swell butt, if you're running a smaller dog, like a factory or um, something of that, you know, with not a lot of space between the saw and the end of the dog, your, your saw will kind of slide around on the stump and it won't grip in very well. And you start cutting a bunch of these trees down and you get pretty tired of holding that saw up because it won't, it won't grip and... Uh, it just gets like you're holding that saw up for long periods of time is going to make you real tired. So that's a lot of the reason why the guys on the West Coast will run these bigger dogs. It spaces the uh, the saw away from the swell butt. When you turn your saw, let's say starter side down, it's not going to hit on the case as much. And I'll show you that here in a moment. I'll make a couple cuts for you, but that's one thing to consider. Um, if you're in a hardwood or a tree that doesn't have swell butt and the tree's coming straight down, you don't have to deal with any of this and you have a smaller tree with shorter bar, you wouldn't want to choose a big large dog um, to set onto your saw because you're going to lose bar length. And that might be crucial to somebody that's running a 20 inch or 24 inch bar. They don't want to, you know, lose an inch of bar length or three quarters of an inch depending on whatever model they're they're running but the you know the west coast guys were using 32 up to 42 inch bars if you lose a half inch to three quarter to one inch it's not a big deal to accommodate that longer dog in this kind of wood so i'm going to make a couple cuts here and i'll kind of explain um the differences and how it kind of spaces the saw away from the tree kind of help you visualize what i'm talking about so this is a 661 with the five points on it. And I'm gonna set the saw onto the side of this stump, kind of show you the spacing between the case. And this isn't even bad swell butt. This is just kind of normal that what we deal with here. So if you set the saw on there, I don't know if you can see it, that dog is gripping in and I still have room between the case and the bottom um, of the swell butt so it's not rubbing on the saw I can still you know leverage off of the bottom of the dog to make my cut I'm not having to hold the saw I mean I'm holding it up with one finger not that tiring here's the three points they're kind of similar still got room between the bottom of the saw and the swell butt. And as you get into the four points, they're a little bit closer. Um, when you get into this situation, see if you guys can see, there you go. If I don't have that dog gripped in, it's gonna rub the bottom of that saw and it starts to get difficult to hold that saw up and make my cut. If I if I dog in and tilt the saw, that's fine, but now my, my cut is crooked when the saw is hitting the bottom of the tree. So when you get more angle on these swell butts, it gets even harder to get that saw to grip in with smaller dogs. So one 
thing to consider with the three-point dogs is the center spike lines up with the chain perfectly. So when you're putting a face in, when you make your first initial cut, it's lined up with that center dog. It's almost like an arrow, like, okay, there's the back of my face cut. And then when you basically pull out and come back in, I'm trying to hold the saw and do this, but you could put, in theory, that point right where you ended that last cut and go ahead and make your turn and it will come right up to where the back of the last cut was and your faces will pop right out. That's one really nice feature of the three points. Um, the other dogs, the five points, you kind of, I'll, I'll set that saw up on there and you can kind of see it will touch back here um, before the center point does. This stump's kind of rounded back, but it's kind of an old junker I've been sawing on. But I think you guys kind of get the point of what I'm trying to explain on the three points. It really helps you with that center dog indicate where your chain is. And if you were to face this tree and then come around the back and you're bringing your bar up, that center dog would tell you right where your chain is at on your back cut so you could see how much holding wood you had left coming up to the back of your face without pulling out your bar and looking at your chain. You could literally pull your saw back, stab it in with your center dog and go ahead and, and bring that tip around and you would have the holding wood of where you put that center dog at. I'll set the five point on there so you can kind of see that one now. So here's the, actually this is the four point and you can see the bottom dog is touching and it's pointed you know, below the back of your face. So you're kind of guessing, um, you can kind of see the chain moving here, I guess. Um, but when you go to place your other one, you're kind of guessing where to put that back dog in order to bring your face around. I mean, it's all you know, experience and personal preference, but you can pull the saw clear out and make your bottom cut without ever touching the dogs until the last part of it. So there's lots of different ways to cut a face out. I'm just kind of pointing out how the dogs kind of can indicate where you're at in your cut. And there's the five points. You can still see the chain pretty good and you're dogged in back here. But, um, you know, when you go to make your face, you're kind of guessing where to put that back dog in when you, I can't bring the saw around cause I'm up into this, but when you were, if you were to plant your dog in and then make your undercut, you are kind of guessing to where to put it. Unless you were to just, you know, eyeball your bar in and then bring this dog around. All these dogs work really well. It's just some of the, some of the nice features of having one versus the other. I'll try to go over this log and kind of show you how they kind of articulate when you, uh, when you do a buck. So I decided to use this top of the stump to kind of show the leverage point of each dog if it was to be in the log cutting down through a log. So if you had your, you know, your bottom dog into the log and you were cutting, you can see how it pivots off this point and the tip of the bar is basically doing the cutting as the bar moves forward. So this has a tendency to be a little bit more hungrier on your chain. Um, some guys just adjust their chain for it. It's not a big deal. But you can kind of see the leverage point and then I'll put up the four point. There's the four point. And it doesn't have as much movement in this area as the other one. It's, it's a nice transition cutting from this point into the wood it's still you know evenly putting the bar down more than the bar going down on the tip on the five point a little bit more than this one you can kind of see that now i'll do a three point three point um being that the dog is lined up directly with the chain it's kind of hard to see it but it it is sitting 
it's not it's not going down or up it's actually articulating on that dog so if you are making a transition from the back dog to the center dog once you go from here that point to where you get to there your chain can be aggressive between this dog and that center dog but once you get onto that center dog it has a tendency to smooth out even if your chain's pretty aggressive and that goes for any of these dogs being the four or five point um, anytime you transition from the bottom dog to the next one you know you're you're pushing the tip of the bar in and you can see the bar moving forward but as soon as you get on that center dog on the three points it's right on the kerf and it'll have a tendency to smooth out once you get to that point if you're chains too aggressive from bottom to top you could always you know you know free wheel the saw in and hit your center point and then start to articulate down and you could get around a too aggressive chain so that's just a little pointer um, that I do sometimes because I get a little aggressive on my rakers and I have to just you know free wheel the saw in until I get to my center point otherwise it saw kind of jolts back and forth a little bit and I fight it so one other thing to consider when looking at these dogs is the top point. Um, basically these are out further. If you're into back barring, you could stab that in. It gives you enough clearance to miss your hand guard. On the smaller dogs, they're in a little closer. So you don't quite have that ability to articulate off that top one. The, the five point has a nice big top dog if you're into back barring. So to recap on what we talked about out in the field, basically, if you're gonna be in really big wood, you know, swell butted cedars or whatever, your five point is your biggest dog. It's gonna space the saw away from the tree the most on the base of those big swell butts. The three point is also a good option for that because it has, you know, a large dog on the bottom and it does space the saw out. Um, and it's a great all around dog with the, the center point and everything like that. So those two would work really well on really large timber. The uh, four point on these particular models, the 661, the four point would, you know, be better if you were going to not want to lose as much bar length. The four point would be a good choice. I did bring out a 362 with our three points on there to kind of show you that not all of our dogs are super long. They're, you know, obviously proportioned to the saw. So whenever you're choosing a dog, depending on the model, the, the three and the four point dogs are really good all around dogs. You can't lose with either one of them. So hopefully this helps you guys choose what dog is suited for your setup and, and uh, you can make a logical decision of what, what fits you guys. So thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.